Welcome to the Young, Dumb, and Love podcast, where we talk about all things marriage. Our goal is to help equip you to have a marriage that is better than you have ever imagined by sharing real life experiences, getting into the nitty gritty, and sharing practical ways you can start today. Let's dive in. Uh, so my entire life, um, growing up where I did, okay. everyone always would talk about when marriage is, the longer you're married to someone, the more you start to look like them. <laughs> and um, I'm not going to lie. I had a dream the other night okay. and I like woke me? up terrified because you started to look like me, right? <laughs> and I think it's because... I I look so cute. No. I think it's because I have this wig that I every yeah. once in a while will put on just to make fun of you. Um, all in fun. It's just fun. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I saw that and you came around the corner and you're like, hey, big boy. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Legit. Hey, in, in fact, hold on. Okay. Let's just see this real quick. Oh. That doesn't even look like my hair. It's like too. It's too dark on the top. So you, Can you get it on there? If you started to look like <laughs> me, this what is a, what I imagine. What a sight, though. Oh my gosh. I'm like, babe. <laughs> <laughs> With the beard and did I have a beard? I'm actually super grateful. Did that I have? Did, did <laughs> yes, I? that's the problem. You look like and those, this. And those eyebrows. And the, these eyebrows, which are pretty nice, but they are nice. But, but I mean, you came around those the corner. Eyebrows on me would you be came around the corner intense. in my dream, and I was like, no, no. nope, not happening. <laughs> that so, hair is not my hair. <laughs> this is your hair. No, it's not. It's like too like orangey red on top. Oh my gosh, it's me. Do you have? Do you? I need a drink from my my cup. It's 50 ounces now. I leveled up. New year. <clears throat> that is a big... New levels. So hey. thank God we're thank not God. starting to look like each other. What do you think? I would literally the, lose my mind. Look at the camera. Do we look like? <laughs> now I'm taking that thing off. Oh. Because the nightmare is coming back to my mind. It's a lot to have that much hair, huh? Like, wow. <laughs> it anyway. Really, your parents kind of look like each other. Yeah. So when I, when I hear people say that, I'm like, okay, it can be true for some. But I think they always kind of looked like each other. But for us, it will never... In, Jesus name. It'll never be for us. <laughs> well, which way would it go? You look more like me or me look more like you? We it wouldn't go either way cuz we are completely, completely opposite different. of each yeah. other. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's fair. Yeah. Okay. All right, Brittany, what yeah. are we talking about today? Say it. Say it. Say it. Do, do the dirty. Do the dirty. <laughs> do the dirty, but maybe not how you're thinking, but ah. do the dirty. Um, now just really coming around this whole idea of and we've talked about it, you know, different avenues before, but really like, what does it look like to become a lifelong learner mm -hmm. of your spouse Yep, and to really like dig into what is marriage really supposed to look like? Mm. And, and here's the thing is like, there is no one size fits all marriage. Yeah. But there are like certain principles and values and boundaries that really, if and like any marriage could implement the foundations, the stuff. foundations. Yeah. Exactly. Because I mean, everyone's marriage is going to operate different, different 100%. expectations, different roles, you know, like obviously there's those foundational roles, yeah. like the husband as the leader, the provider, mm -hmm. you know, but sometimes those may look a little different. They could look different. Um, yeah. We know, we know lots of wives that are the provider that, yeah. and the husbands take care of the yeah. kids and they take care of the house. Exactly. And so that's, I think what I'm saying is like, there is no one size fits all because if that yeah. works for your family in your specific marriage, then there's nothing wrong with that. And exactly. there's no shame in that. Yeah. Um, but really that whole idea of becoming a learner for life mm -hmm. when it comes to your spouse. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's huge. Yeah. Um, so becoming a learner of your spouse so that really what you're saying is that we're going to change like our yeah. mentality on how we see life and how yeah. we, you know, we're going to grow in certain areas and yeah. like, cause a lot of people, you, when you get married, you married the person at that time. Right. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, fell I in love with you. 18. I feel in love with you. Yeah. You were 18. I was 20. We were kids. Like it would be a travesty <clears throat> if I was still the still same that person. person. Exactly. At 36. Yep. That I was at 18. Exactly. Yeah. And so learning and growing with each yeah. other is so important because yeah. there's going to be, especially because when we got married so young, there's going to be a lot of Whoa. things that we learn there's a lot of about learning. each other. But there's also going to be yourself. a lot of things that you learn about yourself and things have come out. And we're like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> who? Okay. Didn't know that was there. Must do something about it yeah. now. Immediately. Warning, warning. <laughs> 
Well, and I think that's the thing. So it's like two different, maybe two different paths I want to talk, two different avenues, okay. two different ways. One being a learner of your spouse. Okay. So, and so that's one. And then two, being a learner of yourself mm -hmm. yeah. and growing and changing and evolving yes. and then how that affects your marriage. Uh, yeah. Cause like you said, you, you change, you evolve. Like yeah. all of us are changing, we're learning, we're dreaming, we're evolving. And if you don't do that alongside your spouse, mm -hmm. one day you're going to look them in the eye and be like, I don't know who you are anymore yeah. or you don't really know who I am anymore. Yeah. And so now the consequence of that is that our marriage now, I don't, I'm, I don't love it. I'm not thriving in it. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel right. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, I guess maybe start with being like a learner of yourself, like doing the work, Yeah. you know, on <clears throat> yourself. Yeah. And that's where it should always begin. Always. You know, as well, much like as you always say, you can only control what you, what you can do. control. Yeah. And you, I can't control you. I can't control your choices the way no. you think. Yep. Um, the only thing I can control in, in my life is me and my choices and how I think and how I operate. Yeah. And so um, it is important to continue to learn and grow uh, for yourself. Oh, you're a hot mess over here. This is our <clears throat> 20 pound dog who is convinced she's Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, she's definitely a lab dog for sure. She is. She's so cute. Um, but yeah, it's so important to, to focus on yourself so that you. you can be the best version yeah. of yourself. If you want to show up to your marriage and you want your spouse to grow and be uh, what you want them to be, it's just so yeah. important for you to work on yourself first and show them, be an example, right? Right. And so if if you're super struggling in an area mm -hmm. of your of your life, yeah. I should be doing everything I can to make sure that I'm super solid for you, to support you. Yeah. to be a foundation for you to yeah. show you to teach you and that's why it's important to focus on yourself right. right well and it's like you want to be working on yourself but then also make sure that doesn't cause you to be selfish exactly. you know and i think that yeah. it's hard because so many of these things and we live in a world where people are like a or z yeah people have like a yeah. really hard time being like well they said this and so they that's that's they meant that it's like okay hold on let's calm down a little and really be able to see like okay it doesn't have to be this like pendulum doesn't have to swing from A to Z. Like just because you're working on yourself doesn't make you selfish. You know what I mean? And um, it's important to not be selfish. Mm -hmm. And I think inherently, we've talked about this, as humans, we're inherently selfish mm -hmm. a lot of times. Like we have this tendency to think of how can you serve me? Mm. How can you serve my needs rather than how can I serve you? Like how can I show up for you, mm -hmm. my spouse. And I think that that happens a lot. Like yeah. we start thinking like, well, he's not doing this or mm -hmm. she's not doing that. And it's because we have needs that we, that aren't being met. Mm -hmm. So we become selfish, yep, for you sure. know, and, but it's important to be the best. <clears throat> if you can become the best version of yourself, you will show up and your marriage will become the best version it can be. When yeah. there's two people that are committed to being the best version of themselves. Yep then your marriage will naturally fall only, place. yeah, will only benefit from that, mm -hmm. you know? Um, that's so true. Um, I've seen that in you so much. Stop it. <laughs> I have. That's not I've, even in the notes. I can always tell, I can personally always tell yeah. when you've been working on yourself in certain areas yeah, and it makes, it's easy to recognize because there's, I can see a difference inside of your mentality, your attitude. Not that you have an attitude. No, I definitely um. have an attitude. <laughs> I can have an attitude. I don't um, all the time. But, but I can I tell can. the difference and I guarantee you that wherever you're at, your spouse, if, if you're working on yourself, I guarantee you that your spouse will be able to recognize yeah. the difference that you are making for yourself. And what it's going to do, it's going to encourage them to want to work on themselves so they can keep up with what you're doing because they're going to look at you and go, wow, she's killing it and I'm not. I should probably get my life together, right? It's kind of like working out, right? You work out hard, right? Lately, you've been like going super hard and I'm like, all right, I need. I weighed level myself up. the other day, and I was level like, up. "It's time to level up, <laughs> level down, level down, uh, <laughs> but level up the workout." But your the encouragement came right. from your consistency. And but isn't the it? But I that think 
And that's a great point, but I wasn't like hounding you, like not or at all. saying you like say one you're word. chubby or saying <laughs> yeah. nothing rude. Because I think that's the other thing is I think when we work on ourselves, yeah, then we want to go to our spouse and be like, you should be doing this or you mm. should be doing that. And it's like that's set the example help. by who you who you are, yeah. you know. And and we have so many episodes on communication and, and how and to yeah <laughs> how to approach tough conversations, you know. Um, but becoming the best version of yourself, which is what we talked about, and then. Um, how do you become a learner, a lifelong learner of your spouse? Mm -hmm. And why is that important? Yeah. You know, that's a question like, how do you do that? How do you become someone who is constantly learning how to love your spouse, how to serve your spouse? Yep. Because like you said, if you're changing, like I've changed over 18 years, mm -hmm. you know, like foundationally we're the same values are the same. Like, you know, we still love the Lord. We still want to raise our kids a certain way. We still have certain values, but there are dreams that have changed identity of like who I thought I was. Now this is what I'm doing, what I thought I was going to do with my yeah. life, you know? Yep. Like we change. Yep. So if your spouse changes, you have to change maybe the way you're approaching your spouse in certain yes. ways. So like, how do you become a lifelong <laughs> learner of your spouse? Why are you laughing? Well, cause I'm just thinking about how we learn about each other. Yeah. And so it makes me laugh because most people don't get this. They, yeah. they, they drop the ball in the sense of, they just don't ask the question. Yeah. Like, Hey, True. how, can, how I can I be better at communicating to you? How can I be better? And, and I always point, want to point the finger back to myself. Like, w you know, I've noticed a change in you. Mm -hmm. What can I do yeah. to help you yeah. in these changes or whatever, yeah. you know, there's different, whatever the situation is, but becoming a student really is asking the right questions. Right. Um, when I was in school, if I didn't ask the right questions and I just try to figure it out for myself, I would struggle. Right. But if no, I good. went and asked the right questions and yeah. say, okay, tell me why you have to break it down like that. Yeah. Those are the moments where I realized, Oh, I just didn't know the right process. I didn't know how it was how it was supposed to work. Right. Because I maybe I didn't hear it. Maybe it got past me when I was reading. Yeah. I if I'm studying you. Yeah. It's, things can just get right past me. Mm -hmm. So it's better just to ask in a polite way, obviously. No, polite. Yeah. What can I much, do? Yeah. yeah. To help you that's in so this good. area, and yeah. that's how. I feel like is the best communicate or the best way to grow and to be a student of your spouse. Yeah. Well, and it's like, you can ask them. And I think what's beautiful about that is it shows that you've one that you've recognized like that they've, they've been working on something or changing something. And then it gives them the ability to communicate that to you. Cause maybe they want to say something, but they're uncomfortable. <laughs> but they're afraid. Or yeah. Like, Oh my gosh, what if I ask them to, you know, do this? Or if I ask him to step up in this area and it offends him or whatever, you know, and, and that things do change and your spouse changes and roles will change. And it's like this, like we were talking about this when we were, you know, writing down show notes, like when I first got a cell phone, I was 16 mm -hmm. and it was one of those like brick ones and you could like change the face plates. I wish I would have saved it to show the girls because it was, it would have been a great toy, <laughs> but it, and I was 16. Um, all my friends already had cell phones, but we had this thing. My parents were like, you can get it when you start driving. And I was like, okay. So it had like face plates. What if I was still trying to operate my life from that phone? Mm. Like now I can literally close real estate transactions from this phone. Yeah. I can like pay my bills from this phone and book trips from this phone. Mm -hmm. But if I was still trying to operate on the phone that I had when Originally, I was 16, yep. I would be so out of touch. So out of like, like what's going on and out of date on how to like operate. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like that in your marriage, like you're going to grow, you're going to change. And the problem is we think when we get married, like we get married and we mm -hmm. think what, what do we think? Mm, the if it's it could perfect. just be like this for the rest of our lives. We're magical <laughs> and shiny. And I get to see you naked anytime I want. Yes. And, you know, it's going to be so lovely. And we're going to have dinner together every night by candlelight. Do you have a British accent? I don't know. <laughs> you suddenly switched yes. to a British accent. <laughs> but, you know, like we just, we, because if we thought it was going to be hard, mm. a lot of us would just be like, I'm out. Eh, oh, just won't for get sure. married. But we're like, we're so ready for this exciting, beautiful adventure. And then life <laughs> shows up yep. and you're like, Oh snap. Like we have to pay these bills and yeah. we like argue and like no one 
Like, yeah. yes, people will prepare you for that stuff. We too. don't see eye to eye on everything, on every <laughs> single thing. But if we just lived in that space where no, everything's perfect. Everything's fine. And we never grew and never learned, never changed. Like that would be a problem. Yeah. Like we would have very outdated ideas, communication styles, sex life. All of it would be outdated. Yes. Yeah. Things do not look the same as they did 18 so years ago for the better. Yeah. But because we've learned each other, like I would say our communication, our sex life, our financial life, all of it, like even if it has hiccups, yep. we've grown, we've, we've evolved it. We've had tough conversations and yeah. areas that are tough, Yep, you know, so, so just true. becoming a learner of your spouse. Um, well, think about it. Like even in your workspace, you're, yeah. all, we're always learning. We're, we're uh, dedicated, absolutely. right? We're dedicated yeah. to learn how to do things, to yeah. do new things, to grow true. with the business because we know that it'll make a difference. We'd like, yeah. we will make more money if we can do more, if we are, we have more capability and, and if you and knowledge. update. Yeah. Like the software you Update use. Update your computer, Brittany. I mean, uh, <laughs> Why isn't my computer working? Why can't I say this? Document. When did you up- update it last? 2016? Oh my gosh. Oh, Lord, help me. Yeah. So you, we need to be constantly updating yes. our software so yeah. that we can continue to grow and learn and get better at what we do and what right. we're doing. So that was a really good 100%. analogy. I loved it. <gasps> Thank you. It's because you're techie. <laughs> I was like really going for it. Yeah, you got me on that um, one. Well, and I think like you said, okay, we're living in like the digital age, obviously. And I work with a lot of really incredible business women. And there's this new, I wouldn't say it's new, but there's a digital product for every single thing you can think of, like how to run your Instagram, how to make reels, how to build a real estate team, yeah. how, how to potty train, how to like, you could name it. And there is a digital product and you will buy a digital product yeah. for basically anything. But do you ever get resources that would help build your marriage. Like, mm-hmm. I think we just kind of overlook our marriage. Yeah, we put- And like, when's the last time I maybe like read a book that would help me, you know, become better at being married, you know, or listen to a podcast or which you're listening to this podcast. So there you go. Um, or maybe did like a digital course or did some yeah. marriage coaching <clears throat> or, yeah. you know, whatever. We have a tendency to only want to work on something when it's on fire. And Mm. sometimes when it's on fire, it's a little little too too late. late. Not that you can't work back, but it's like, if you do the work, rebuild what was burnt. Yeah. And that's hard, you know? And so that's why like I continually read marriage books. Does that mean I agree with every single thing that's in that marriage book? No. No. Does that mean I throw it down when I disagree with it? No, No. because I'm (laughs) a mature adult and (laughs) I'm not a child on on TikTok. There are things that I go, okay, you know, that's not really something that I would implement for my self or in our marriage, but I could see where they're coming from, but it's like being a learner of your marriage. Um, and like the beauty, we talked about this too, and you, I'm going to let you speak on it, but when you, life is hard. We talk about that. Like life can just be hard. Like life is always kind of coming at you. We live in a day and age where if you don't take control of your time, like time Time will just come and suck the life out of you. Right. Like everything's going and you have to be at this practice and this person needs dinner. And then this person forgot their cheer clothes and the bills are due. The dogs are barking food. Like it's just, there's always something chaos, right? There's always something always. And we have a tendency to overlook our marriage oftentimes, but here's the other thing. When your marriage is also really struggling. Yeah. And that's just another tick on the, this is a problem or this is something that isn't, doesn't feel safe to me right now, doesn't feel good, then everything else actually feels even harder. Yeah. Right? So true. Like yeah. when your marriage is hard, everything else also feels harder. When you have a marriage that you've cultivated a really healthy environment, then you have a safe place to go. Yep. You know, like at the end of a hard day, if you're like, <clears throat> oh, now I have, now to, I have go to go home, home to my wife yeah. or Oh, now I have to go home to my husband. So true. Like that, that breaks my heart. That is, you know, that, that breaks my heart. And some yeah. of you were like, that's me. Like, well, cause that should be me. our safe place. That should be yeah. the one place where we can go and just melt into the arms yes. of our spouse and go, yes, I just and need you to hold me. Don't say anything at yes. all. I just need you to hold me and tell me it's going to be okay. Yes. Okay. It's a place where you should be able to exhale. You yeah. know how sometimes I feel like we live yeah. And this constant, like we're holding our breath. Oh yes. We're just going, 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 and we're holding it. And we realize, like, there's times I'm like, take a deep breath. Like I literally have to be. 
breathe. And that's like, you want, like what our heart is and why we even do this podcast and why we show up is we want people to have thriving marriages where that is their, a safe space for them. Yeah. Like, of course that their safe space is their relationship with the Lord, but that they're next to that, that that safe space that they've cultivated is that relationship with their spouse that they know they can lay bare in front of them. Don't get all crazy, but lay their whole life. Like, this is what I'm struggling with. This is how I'm feeling. And there's no shame. There's no condemnation. There's no fear. It's just, yeah, it's just pure. It's just, this is, this is who I am. This is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm struggling with. This is how I feel. And knowing that you're safe in that space. Mm -hmm. And I think that there is nothing more beautiful here on this earth for us than having that beautiful, safe space with our spouse. Yeah to be able to do that. Yep. But the truth is most people don't, most people don't. Yeah. You know? And so how do we change that? Like, how do we change that? How do we, we change that? We change that from the connection that we have with each other. So a lot of people who don't have that space is because they have a nagging wife or their husband's rude and doesn't get it. You know, like there's, they don't have grace for each other. So without grace, there is no space for them to be able to come and heal. Right. Nice one. I know. Thank you. (laughs) But without that grace, it's so hard to be able to have those real conversations with each Mm -hmm. other. So the best thing for you to do is just start over. Like it's okay. There's nothing wrong and there's no shame in it at all, but just start over, start the conversation, start how you guys interact with each other completely over and just literally sit down with each other and be like, all right, so we're going to start like over. Like a reset button. Here's how we're going to hit. Here's yeah. how we're going to reset. Um, we're going to have way more grace for each other. Yeah. And when I bring something to you, I just want you to listen. And I don't want you to get frustrated and mad. I just want to be able to have a conversation in a, an adult conversation where yeah. we can learn uh, with each other what this, what we can do about this situation. Yeah. Um, and, but, but right now there's going to be so many people who are like, well, my wife just, she just nags at me like, all the that time. That would never happen. And that would never yeah. happen. But I'm like, Hey, honestly, you never hurts to just try. Well, and we talk about this and mindset is huge. And like, we're big believers in mindset and changing your mindset and what you say. So you're right. If you say, well, that'll never happen. You're right. Go ahead and just turn off this episode. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Change your mindset. But if you're like, you're right. (laughs) That would be amazing. Maybe we don't have that yet. We don't have that type of marriage yet. There you go. But I'm dedicated to make that, make that. Mm -hmm. Cause I can, here's what I know. If you're a husband or a wife and you're listening to this right now, I can guarantee that if you went to your spouse and said, Hey, I listened to this episode. I would love for you to listen to it. It's about like, how do you, how are we going to make our marriage a safe space? Mm -hmm. How can we make it so amazing that we cannot wait to get home to each other, that we miss each other. No matter what kind of day we had, we're excited that we know that there's going to be this little reprieve from the world that lives within our marriage. Mm -hmm. Like who wouldn't want that? Like who wouldn't want that? Seriously. Who wouldn't want to know that their spouse is their biggest fan, their yeah. greatest cheerleader, their biggest advocate, you know, like people, you, like yeah. you want that. You did a practice today that I think would be a great place to start if that is you. And so if you're, if your spouse and you don't have that safe space with each other and you feel like there's no way you could ever get there, yeah. there's a great, like I said, hit the reset button, but there's a great yeah. place to start. And Brittany did this today without me even realizing that she was going to do it. She grabbed me. She held oh, me. I'm like, what did she I looked do? at me oh, in yeah. the eyes and out of nowhere, she just started saying, I'm I'm so grateful for you for this and for this. And she started just naming off all these things that she's grateful uh, for me about. And it's like, it was so unexpected and, but it filled my heart to the brim and I was overflowing with just joy, love, passion, all the things that you could ever think of because she just came to me and she started telling me what she loves about me and and what she appreciates about me. And in my mind, I'm like, this is, this is it. This is what people need to figure Mm. out because if they would realize that they would just take time to just honor each other and love each other, speak encouraging words over each other. That's a great place to start to rebuild that confidence with each other so that you can have a safe place. So if you do struggle in that area where you can't have a safe place with your spouse, start 
there begin to just look at your spouse in the eye and just randomly just grab them hold them tight look at them in the eye and say hey i just want to say i love you and mm-hmm. i appreciate you for this and start naming and get off specific yeah get very you know? specific i i appreciate that you, you get do up this, and go to work this and, and just name those off for it. them yeah be very specific you know yeah. no matter how dumb it might feel or sound like i really appreciate how you make the bed every day I know You're that welcome. it's a, it's a safe place. <laughs> I really appreciate how you pick up dog poop every day. Like it makes me feel either. like our backyard isn't as dirty, <laughs> you know, like whatever, just I start mean, thinking about all the things yeah. you truly do appreciate them yes. and say those things so that they can feel the love. And what it does, it, it brings down guardrails, it, it brings does. down walls mm-hmm. and it helps you go, oh. okay, they see me. Yeah. And when your spouse feels like you see them, they're going to be more likely to be a safe space for you. Yeah. Well, and like you just said, which was such a good point, And I know we even talked about this again today, like all these things, like they, if you walk in the room and your spouse is in the room and you automatically feel like your guard just went up, yeah. that's a sign that it's not a safe space right now. And yep. that you're not like, it's not healthy. Like it's mm-hmm. not healthy. Like you're not supposed to walk in the room with your spouse and feel on edge and frustrated what was that? right away. My hair was stuck <laughs> to the microphone. Listen, this can be a lot. It's okay? a journey. Um, like that's a, that's a sign that like something's not right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And listen to your body. Like your body tells you a lot of things. And I think oh my we, gosh. we body are language. like kind of told like, just ignore that feeling, you know, feelings aren't real, but it's like, no, <laughs> they're very real. And you feel them, you know, they're real. And I've said that before, like yeah. feelings are real because if you feel them, you know, they're real. doesn't mean that they're true, but the feeling is yes. a real feeling. Yeah. And so it's like, that's a sign. Like, listen to Wow. Every time Julian's watching the room this week, I'm like, just mad. Like, I don't yeah. even know why, but I'm mad. And I, I could typically feel that if that's the and case. Sometimes, <laughs> I mean, here's the bottom line. Like here, I'm going to give two practical just thoughts <laughs> to this. Okay. There are just times and I'm speaking as a woman. So, I mean, maybe men feel like this, but like, we just like have different cycles. You know, we all know it is what it is. There are times I'm just mad. And if I'm really honest, I'm literally mad for no reason other than (laughs) my hormones are out of control (laughs) and I am a hot mess and that's just it. So then I know if I take that inventory of my, and it takes like 10 second inventory. Why am I mad? Oh, I'm just kind of PMSing. He didn't actually do anything wrong. Okay. I'm going to let it go. Or the other is I'm frustrated because last week this situation happened and I haven't approached it. So now I'm just mad all the time, but I haven't even given him an opportunity to change that. So it's been seven days of me being mad, but not telling him. Yeah. Neither one of those is really like the best, but it's just important. Like, listen to those signs. Ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? Okay. Do I need, is this something worth approaching? Nah, no, I'm just going to let it go. Or yeah, you know what it is, but maybe right now is not the right time. Mm -hmm. And we have so many episodes on communication. So I'm not even going to unpack that. I'm going to say, put them in the show notes and Mm -hmm. go back and watch all of them. Um, but sometimes, you know, you have to listen to those feelings. Like, why am I feeling this way? Why am I so frustrated? And it could just be something like that. But you know, I don't even remember why I started telling this story, which is not shocking (laughs) to Julian, (laughs) but, um, very squirrely. Um, (laughs) I actually, this is funny, Julian this week, this is a side story, which I told, you know, you told me no side story because well, <laughs> you're the king of the side story. But I, Julian literally was like, you have to finish this one thing. He's been asking oh me, gosh. which is great. Cause then I'll tell yeah. them what it's for. But yeah. we, he's like, I need you to put together like a resource page for the website with books and studies and like things that people could grab if they want to read like a marriage book for sure. by like a reputable a reputable marriage book i struggle with being <sighs> very distracted easily i will literally start a sentence and julian will be like i and... i know what you were trying to say so do you want to fit and i'm like i don't i don't, I don't know, know what, I was, what I was talking about <laughs> it's called it's adhd fine honey. And when you learn that you maybe struggle with something like that later in life, it really opens your eyes to a whole bunch of things. And you're like, wow. Okay. It happens every day. Let's just be honest. Every anyway, single day you'll start something and then not finish it because you suddenly get a text. I just mom brain, but I'm not sure that's what it is. It might be part mom brain. I think it's part, I think I've just, it's gotten worse. Anyway, <laughs> let me tell the story before I lose it. But he's like, you need to put together this resource page. You have this stack of books that you've read and highlighted and have notes in. Let's like make sure people can get their hands on them. So I'm like, okay. But then I started working on something else. He literally grabs my phone, sets a timer, puts it down and goes, you have 30 minutes. And in that 30 minutes, the only thing you're allowed to do is all of the 
Links. Links. Yeah. <sighs> it's, it's just gathering links it. for all of our resources that we feel like we should give people. <laughs> That's this it. This dog is not a laughing And it was dog. every, literally every five seconds. Squirrel. 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 Listen, Squirrel. like I'll get a text message or the laundry will be beep, beep. done or whatever. So timers are good for me if I but stick, to stick to the to timer. It. Yeah. Which I'm stubborn. So and then when you were done, I was like, are you, are you done? Are your 30 minutes up? <laughs> I was like, yes, dad, my 30 minutes are up. She, she uh, made a note in our notes that we share with each other and it, she called it. Links, um, you drill links, sergeant. Yeah, links, you drill sergeant. But they're there. So it worked. Hey, you know what? Sometimes anyway, you gotta be a drill sergeant. I don't even remember why I told that story. Oh, the resources. resources. So anyway, I don't know why. We have resources. We have resources. Yes, that's, I got you. That's the point. I got you. Um, but grab one of these books. Yeah. Like if you're like, okay, I don't know how to be a lifelong learner or I don't even really know how to learn about marriage or how I should be implementing different principles. Like some of these books have been huge parts of like. Oh my gosh. We've held um, on to them for our yeah, entire well, marriage. One of them we read in college. Yep. And Bef- so yeah, there's going. Before we're married or after we're married? We it were. Was after we're after married. After we're married, I yeah. think. So yeah, they're going to be points that you're like oh, okay i don't know if that really resonates with me and that's okay just keep reading there are totally. going to be good things about it and um but grab one of these books read it tag us like say like oh my gosh i read this and this is where i found it and young dumb in love whatever like we want to hear how you're working on your marriage you know what yeah. i mean and, and we want to like our goal in 2024 is to take the podcast and really start like equipping people with mm. more resources because we know that it can be challenging yeah, and for sure we want to have resources out there. But so if you are looking for a book, you can check out the resources and I, you can thank me because I did the links. Did he probably <laughs> have to redo them? Yes. But I at least sent him to the general area <laughs> that he needed to be. Um, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're, we're a good, um, we're a good team. We're a good team. <laughs> but to recap before yes. we really squirrel, because you know what happens when I get squirrely. Um, so anyway, be a lifelong learner. Yes. You have a responsibility to be a lifelong learner just in general, but of your spouse, how can you serve them and stop asking the question, how can my spouse serve me? Yeah. And ask yourself, how can I serve my spouse? So that's the first thing. Be a learner. How can you be serving your spouse? Yeah. What else? I forget the second one. <laughs> oh, imagine. We've talked about a lot today. We have, we have, we have. Um, it was... Uh, grow, growing grow, your, like growing your marriage. Yes. Like working on your marriage. Work, oh, taking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the dirty. Do, do the dirty. Doing the do dirty. the dirty work. So like learn your spouse. Do the dirty work on yourself. Like get in there. Like why, why do I react like this every time he says that? Yes. And I would say that's something that after I really started doing that kind of work, my eyes were open to like, gosh, so sure. many, like not that Julian didn't have things to work on, but there were so many areas that I'm like, I react not because of Julian, but because this was something that was like hardwired in me from the mm-hmm. time I was little and I didn't even know. Yeah. So it's like, do the dirty work, do the nitty gritty, get in there. Why do I react this way? Yes. Why does this always make me feel this way? Yep. You and know? then be a student of your spouse. Yes. I think that, that was, was the, the first one I was said. Was it the first but one that's you okay. said? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Just, you know, <laughs> We're all repeti- right. repetition is what really yeah. sticks. Um, and commit to working. I think I said this already, but commit to working um, on your marriage. Like what can you do to grow your marriage? Yes. To learn like how is like what, how is this marriage supposed to operate? What yeah. is like the design for marriage? Like what's God's design for marriage? Like, ma'am. Nala wants her moment. Um, <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> look at her though. Like she's, she's so cute. If you're what, if you're only listening, there's a cute little golden doodle oh, yes. on her lap. And she thinks she's <clears throat> really little. And she's so she's cute. She's 20 pounds. I love her so much. Yeah. She's, we were just snuggling. She's, she's <clears throat> so sweet. So if you're just listening, make sure you check out the video a little bit so you can see Nala. She's really cute. Um, but being committed to your, your marriage growing. Yes. And remembering that, you, you certainly are not the same person you were when you got married Mm -hmm. and neither is your spouse. Yeah. And so giving that freedom to grow and then your marriage has to change too. That doesn't Mm -hmm. mean now found out foundationally. No, things don't change. You know, your value system, though, those things don't change. What I'm saying is maybe the household stuff changes, your communication changes, the things you need from your spouse change, you know, and 
there's just a difference. Yes. And so that's why it's so important and why we always do talk about communication. Cause as things change, you need to communicate them. You can't assume that they know because they don't, Yep. you know, and just creating a safe space, yes. which honestly, if you are working on yourself and then learning your spouse and growing your marriage, your marriage will become a safe space. Yes. And then you will see the fruit of that. Like when your marriage is thriving, everything else just feels easier. Yes. And I know at least it does for me. Like the hard things feel a little less difficult to mm -hmm. do. <laughs> I really should put her down, but <clears throat> she literally, just, mm. um, the hard things feel less difficult yeah. and you're just like in a better headspace mm -hmm. because there's not this thing weighing on you. That's like, when I get home, I'm going to have oh. to have this conversation. I'm yeah. going to have to deal with this. Doesn't mean it's always perfect people. No, it's not, not perfect. Not we close. have tough conversations in mm -hmm. our home. We have tough days that I'm yep. like, well, that well, we're just going to have to hit a reset tomorrow <laughs> because today wasn't our best day I'm going or whatever. To bed. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sometimes remember, this is the last thing we'll say today. And then, yeah. you know, <clears throat> Again, check out the resource page, young, dumb, and in love forward slash, dot com forward slash resource. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, for those resources. And if you pick one up, like Let send us, us a DM, send yeah. us an email. Like we would love to know like what you think anyway. Or if you have a really good one, you're like, Hey, I read you this suggestions, book. Yeah. Send us a suggestion and I will pick that book up and I will read it yep. to Julian or <laughs> send him the audiobook because I've been reading him books since college. It's, it's so um, real. So real. I just, so real. you know, it's just not my, uh, it's okay. I learn, I actually take it in better if it's audio. So well, it's now fine. you can get audio. Yeah. I know. Audible baby. Um, I don't remember. Yeah. Resources. Resources. But I was going to say something else. Were you? <laughs> Gosh, I'm really off. <laughs> the dog is really distracting. You're me. you just easily distracted. It's okay though. We love you. We love you anyways. Do you? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, we'll, I, I we'll, lost it. We'll put it in the show notes if she remembers. <laughs> <laughs> no guarantees. <sighs> well, we thank you guys so much for being yeah. a part of Young, Dumb, and Love in the podcast today. Um, we're grateful that you listen and that you're a part of our community. Uh, make sure you share Young, Dumb, and Love with anybody who yeah, is married. Anybody. If they're married, send it to them. If they're getting married, send, send it, it to them. them. <laughs> we would love to be a part of that journey with them. Um, like she said, make sure you check out our website, youngdumblove.com forward slash resource for all the resources. Is it resource or resources? Resource. Just with no S. Yeah. Okay. Resource. Make it easy. You know, simple. Yeah. Totally. Um, but make sure you go there, get us some of our resources. Yeah. And yeah. maybe it'll be Young Dumb and Love forward slash resources. I don't know how to look. Just Young Dumb and Love dot com. Just, just click the link below. <laughs> and then also, um, I just want to say one last time, uh, if you want to create a safe space, you got to have grace. Yeah. 